Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan, coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. On Wednesday, Pope Francis prayed for the children and adults who were killed in the mass shooting that took place in a school in the US state of Texas. In his condolence message, the pontiff said it is time to stop the indiscriminate trafficking of arms. At least 19 students and two adults were killed in the shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde. Meanwhile, the Catholic bishops in the US have also called for prayers for the victims of the mass shooting. In a statement, the bishop said, There have been too many school shootings, too much killing of the innocent. They said the Catholic faith calls everyone to pray for those who have died and to bind the wounds of others. They also exhorted believers and people of goodwill to introspect for ways to understand what they term the epidemic of evil and violence. Separately, Archbishop Garcia Siller of San Antonio took to Twitter to implore God's mercy on the children, their families and the communities. Tuesday, May the 24th, was a day of rejoicing for believers in the Paranaque in the Philippines, as a famous Marian image was canonically crowned. The century-old image of Mary, help of Christians in the National Shrine, was pontifically crowned. The ceremony took place during Holy Mass, presided over by Archbishop of Manila, Cardinal Jose Advincula, at the Paranaque National Shrine. During the homily, the prelate spoke about the three dimensions of the Queenship of Mary, those being communion, motherhood and charity. The event was attended by Bishops Onesto Antioco of Cubao, Ronaldo Evangelista of Imus and Patricio Busson of Bacolod. Also present were Archbishop Emeritus Francesco Panfilo of Rabaul in Papua New Guinea and Bishops Emeritus Teodoro Bacani of Novaliches and Leodrona of San Pablo. Pope Francis has appointed Arkansas priest Father Eric Pohlmeyer as the next bishop of the Diocese of St. Augustine in the U.S. state of Florida. Father Pohlmeyer succeeds Bishop Felipe Estevez, whose resignation was accepted by the Holy Father on May the 24th. Pohlmeyer's consecration as bishop and installation in the diocese will take place on July the 22nd. He has served as vicar in different Arkansas churches, and he is currently the parish priest of Little Rock's largest Catholic parish, Christ the King. Following his graduation from the University of Arkansas, he entered St. Meinrad College's seminary in 1992 and was ordained a priest for the Diocese of Little Rock in 1998. Since then, he has served as a priest in the diocese, which encompasses the entire state of Arkansas. Bishop-elect Polmeyer will be the 11th Bishop of St. Augustine Diocese, which comprises 17 counties in the northeastern part of Florida. The diocese also counts more than 153,000 faithful. Senior Hong Kong prelate Cardinal Joseph Zen and five others appeared in court on Tuesday, where they denied charges levelled against them. They have been accused of failing to register a relief fund that was used to provide assistance to pro-democracy protesters in their legal fights. The 90-year-old Cardinal and the others, including singer Denise Ho, were arrested two weeks ago on suspicion of colluding with foreign forces. After several hours of interrogation, the top prelate was released on bail. If found guilty, they can be penalised with a fine of up to 10,000 Hong Kong dollars. The trial is slated to begin on September the 19th and is expected to take place over five days. The head of the Polish Episcopate, Archbishop Stanisław Kadetsky, has said that the Vatican's approach to Russia should be more mature, as the present one appears to be naive. Speaking to a Polish Catholic news agency, the Archbishop said that although the Vatican is an important entity for Russia, Moscow has tried to humiliate the nation several times. The prelate had recently visited war-torn Ukraine. He said that the Holy See should be cautious in its approach towards Russia, as, quote, lying is second nature to Russian diplomacy. Archbishop Gadetsky also added that the Holy See is always neutral in its diplomatic activity during times of conflict. He said that in the context of the war in the Eastern European nation, the Vatican should support Ukraine at all levels and not be guided by utopian thoughts drawn from the theology of liberation. Yet again, the Greek Catholic Major Archbishop of Ukraine has spelt out the nature of crimes committed by Russian troops. Major Archbishop Sviatoslav Shevchuk spoke about the atrocities while virtually addressing a conference entitled Ukraine, a task for peacebuilding. It was held in Italy's city of Milan on May the 23rd. The top prelate said the abuse of civilians, mass killings, sexual violence against women, children and even men, and the bodies lying on the streets are nothing but evidence of the genocide of the Ukrainian people. 
He also condemned the Manifesto of Russianism that was published in a Russian news portal. Archbishop Shevchuk said that the Manifesto calls for the erasing of Ukrainian history, language and culture. He also said it is difficult to accept the Christian justification of the invasion as the Russian Orthodox Patriarch has publicly justified the actions of Moscow's troops. He slammed the use of evangelism to spread the propaganda of what he termed Russian Nazism. The outgoing president of the Australian Bishops' Conference, Archbishop Mark Coleridge, has exhorted the faithful to pray for the Church amid what he calls troubled times. He made this appeal during the homily at the Mass of the Solemnity of Mary Help of Christians on May the 24th. The prelate called for prayers so that the Church in Australia could stand on its own to face difficult times. This comes much ahead of the Second Assembly of the Plenary Council in Sydney from July the 4th to July the 9th. Also, while seeking prayers for the new government, the prelate said, It's not a bad moment to pray for a new government coming to power and the future fairly uncertain both nationally and internationally. Archbishop Coleridge was addressing the faithful in St Stephen's Cathedral against the backdrop of the recent Australian federal election. Citing the turmoil the Church in Australia currently faces, the prelate sought the intercession of the Blessed Virgin. The Fifth Plenary Council of the Australian Church itself was set to be held in two parts. The first assembly occurred in Adelaide from October the 3rd to the 10th last year, and the second is due to be held in July. The Hong Kong Diocese has announced that it will not be conducting the annual Holy Mass for victims of the Tiananmen Square Massacre on June the 4th. Citing concerns over the new national security law, the diocese made it clear that the masses will be suspended for the first time in more than 30 years. Every year, several churches conduct special masses on June the 4th, remembering all who died in the crackdown on pro-democracy protesters in Beijing in 1989. In a statement, the diocese made it clear that it does not mean to disapprove of the memorial mass. However, the Justice and Peace Commission had expressed concern that the mass could violate the provisions of the national security law. Diocesan authorities also clarified that there are other ways to commemorate the deceased by praying for the souls in private or in small groups. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And remember, you can also visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.